let's get going guys i'm going to be doing another video today that is out of the norm of what we've been doing the last several weeks trying to do that a little bit more welcome back to another video here on loud and proud we're going to be doing a reaction video today i have not done one of these videos it's been it's actually been a few years i used to film so much i was telling my uh my my cousin in there who works for me now i was telling him i'm like dude i used to film a video every single day in the early days which by the way if you guys want to check out a new youtube channel we just opened up we just started it's just going back to the very beginning when i used to film literally every single day like i would literally upload if it was you know 365 days in a year i was uploading pretty darn close to that probably 360 videos i mean just crazy, which is how I've gotten to like 1,200 uploads on this channel. Although I cannot be as flexible with that as um, now as I used to be because, you know, I do have a wife, I have a kid, I have another kid due to be born in just a few days, actually. So that's exciting, but you know, life is just different. I got a whole lot of different responsibilities. So as much as I would love to do as much as I used to with the video stuff, it's just a little bit hard until I try to work ways around it so that I can still continue to do it, but I can maybe kind of like how I have my cousin here hired to do a lot of my social media and all that kind of stuff now, maybe I just need to bring on even more help to try to manage other things so that way we can try to keep doing what we used to. Today we're gonna be reacting to some of the Facebook marketplace finds that I find on Facebook. And some of these guys, just keep in mind, don't, don't take these personal. If you see your truck on here and you're like, dude, I'm trying to sell that truck and I think it's worth that much or I don't think it's worth this or don't get offended. You might get offended anyways, even though I say that, but I'm gonna be critical on some of these just because this is just my honest opinion, which here's the cool thing about opinions. That doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. It's just my opinion on it. So I might say a truck is not worth anywhere near what the dude's asking, and he might get a check for that the next day. I have no idea. I could be completely wrong on these, but this is just my opinion based on what I see, and I look for a lot of trucks. I'm scouring through Facebook Marketplace and different websites day in and day out, and I see kind of like what stuff sells for after getting marked down so many times in price, and I see what stuff sits there for months and months and months, and, and it just does not sell. And then if you message the guy, they'll be like, oh no, I'm firm, and then they'll message you like two months later, be like, hey, uh, actually, I'll take that offer you made me that was 10 grand less than asking. It's literally had that happen. So we're gonna get into this, and um, I'm gonna be looking at my phone, going through some of these, and then I'm gonna try to put the uh, video here right next to my face so that way you guys can actually see what I'm looking at as I'm looking at it so we're gonna start with the very first one here and again some of these are gonna be reactions to price being ridiculous and some of these are gonna be you know prices being fair the very first one here is actually a truck that I looked at this is a 1996 it's a Dodge Ram 2500 it's 12 valve and I was super excited about this truck because the guy, I literally called him, I spoke to him, I said, any Russ? He said, no Russ. I said, how about on the frame? He said, no, it's, it's spotless. We redid it. I got under there and, and redid everything myself. It, it's perfect. His words, not mine, just added to it. He literally said, it is perfectly clean. We've gone through everything. You know, it's a perfect, it's a perfectly clean truck. Come check it out. And his price was higher than it is now on the listing. And so I drove, I checked out the truck, and this dude, I mean, dude, there were baseball size holes in a couple spots of that frame. And this is not any kind of, you know, made up stuff. Like I saw this truck in person, it was bad. And I literally said, I said, well, you told me it was rust free. And he was just like, well, they're hard to find, aren't they? And I'm like, well, I've got three of them sitting in my barn, and I've bought 20 other in addition to those. So, I mean, uh, it's hard, but it's a little harder when people lie to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you gotta waste your time looking at trucks that are not actually clean, but they're advertised as clean. And you can see in the description, no rust, clean sheet metal, painted original color, new front end parts, whatever. Truck looks great, looks show quality until you get under it, and then it's scary. It is another second gen. It's an 01 Dodge Ram 2500. It's red. It's got the cap. It's a grandpa truck, dude. I mean, this is this is one that I would actually go look at to consider buying, and I know the price is higher, but when you look through the photos, you look at how nice the seats are, how nice the dash is, and then you read the description, and the guy had an extra set of wheels and tires. He's got the little grandpa flares on it and the cap, but... It was super well maintained according to the guy that had the description. Very clean 01, you know, 24 valve motor, driven by an older guy, very well taken care of, oil bathed every year. You know, that kind of thing 
is what I like to see. And those trucks are out there. And that guy might be asking 25, but he might come down to 22. You know, you just got to go talk to the guy, you know, look at the truck, talk him, talk it over with him. He might be willing to wiggle. I would way rather pay for a hundred thousand mile truck with, you know, bone stock suspension, you know, stock wheels and tires with a pap cap, but it was super well maintained and flawless inside and out than something that's, you know, five to seven grand cheaper with a hundred thousand more miles. It's, you know, it's rough and you're being lied to and the truck's actually not as clean as it as it's advertised. I just made a video yesterday talking about how I think that the 5.9 third gens are debatably the best truck for the money right now. And I still stand behind that. This is a 2005, 78,000 miles on it. Okay, the guy's asking $29,500, but this truck is clean according to these pictures and description. I mean, he, you can just tell sometimes when you look at a truck, like the dude's got WeatherTech mats, he's got seat covers over the seats, you don't see any stains. The rockers look ultra clean. Underside looks like you could eat off it. I mean, the truck just looks like it's been meticulously cared for. That truck right there, again, he might take 27.5 or he might be firm on the 29.5. But for certain trucks, they're worth it. Like that truck, I would pay 29.5 for that truck. Of course, I'm going to try to get it for less if I can, but I would be willing to pay that kind of money for that truck because you can just kind of tell if it is the way that it's advertised again which my reactions are also based on if it's honestly advertised in the truest form i would be willing to pay that kind of money just because of how clean and well maintained that truck is and those are just kind of those are just getting really hard to find like that therefore you got to be willing to pay a little premium to get something that's original not all redone you know it's low miles it's clean it's been taken care of it's not something that was beaten up and neglected and then somebody tried to cover it all up and make it look like it was a really clean well maintained truck um this thing actually legitimately looks really nice the difference is the type of buyer for that truck is just going to be a little bit harder to find it doesn't mean the truck's not worth it it just means that it might have to sit for two weeks before you have a guy that's like, okay, I've got the cash because the bank's probably not going to finance that truck. And he might only drive it in the summer or it might be a guy that parks it. But either way, there are buyers for that truck. I'll tell you right now, that's a nice truck. Kind of what I was talking about in my previous video. If you look at this fourth gen, guys, it's a 2011 2500. The guy's wanting <clears throat> 27999. Okay, 121,000 miles on it. It's been listed for a day. Um, Again, I haven't looked this truck over in person, and most of these I haven't except for that first one. Uh, but the truck appears to be pretty clean. Um, you know, it's got like a decent set of wheels and tires on it. Interior doesn't look all ripped up and nasty. I mean, it looks like it's been pretty well maintained. It's got weather techs in it. But it's like, do you see the price of that truck compared to that third gen we just looked at, or like a couple of the other trucks? I mean, twenty-eight thousand dollars. Let's say they take twenty-seven or twenty-seven five. It's like that is. It's just, it's just crazy where the market is right now because like, I literally just showed you an 0124 valve with 108,000 miles on it for 25. I just showed you an 05 third gen with 78,000 miles on it for 29.5. And then I showed you a 2011, which is what you're looking at right now for 28,000 basically, basically 27.9 with 120,000 miles. Those trucks are all very close to the same asking price in all very similar miles. So, I mean, that's what I meant by the video yesterday. It's like, if you had to choose between them, which one do you think is the best? Which one would I go with? If I wanted pre-emissions, still some creature comforts, you know, it's not totally outdated. Those third gens, man. Here's another fourth gen. It's a 2013. It's a Ram 2500. You know, this guy's reasonable. 109,000 miles on it. He's asking 28,000 bucks. The truck, if it's as clean as it looks, it looks like a clean truck. It's probably worth the money, 28 cash only, Texas truck, rust free, no rips, you know, brand new tires, brand new this, brand new that, bunch of new stuff. And his price, again, his price, his price seems legit, seems very reasonable. And we're going to, we're going to hopefully find a couple here that are a little bit, a little bit absurd. Um, I did find it first gen, the guy wanted 28 grand for it, but it was actually super nice. And I'm not going to show you because I got my eye on it. Would you guys like to see another first gen? It's been a while. If you guys would want to see a first gen, let me know in the comments. They are probably more expensive per truck with miles being low than any of the trucks I'm going to show you right now. Um, first gens are freaking going for the price of a three or four year old used 
fourth or fifth gen. You know what I mean? I mean, it's it's just crazy. Like with a hundred thousand miles on it, freaking first gen. Some of them are going for the same kind of money. It's just absurd. They're basically uh, antique pieces. But here's a 2002 Ram 2500 uh, short bed. Now this truck, the pricing on this truck is right on the verge of you know it it's it would have been absurd five years ago, but it's on the verge of like being honestly what the going rate is right now i mean that's just the, i mean the reality of it it's a beautiful white truck it looks like it's got pretty darn nice uh newer style wheels and tires on it they don't look like they're all old and bald um chuck looks clean he swears it's you know one of the cleanest second gens you're ever going to see which i've seen that sticker a lot before uh but the truck does look clean for 21 grand would be a little steep but that guy might be willing to come down to 19 and then i think it'd be a fairly sweet deal with the current market, I'm saying, it, it seems like it could be a fairly sweet deal for that truck. Five years ago? I don't think so. But right now, this is a truck I'm gonna rip on just a little bit. Not in the fact that it's not a cool looking truck because the thing looks absolutely sweet and I've looked at this thing so many times over the past couple months sitting on Facebook Marketplace. At, le at least a solid month, probably a month and a half, closing in on two. It's an 06 2500 SLT, $25,000, but the truck's got 250,000 miles on it. Uh, stock motor, stock transmission, dings, dents. Um, let me go back through. Dings, dents, uh, fire punk, traction bars, needs new rear tires, needs an alignment, and sway bars. Other than that, really needs nothing. Just had an oil change. See, it's like for, for me personally, and maybe my opinion just doesn't matter to a lot of guys out there that you know, they might see this truck and go, oh no, it's worth 25. This truck's worth realistically, if it was for 20 even, it might be closer to reality. And I'll tell you why I say that. First off, this truck, you know, it might it might be rust free, but I know that he lives in Ohio according to the listing. There's a good chance behind those rear dually fenders, there's rust or under the bed, like on some of the bed rails underneath. And for 250,000 miles, like I know what I paid for this one and it was, it wasn't it wasn't what he's asking for this and this truck's in really really good condition and like the truck needs new rear tires which since it's a dually that's like the equivalent of you buying a full new set which tires are freaking expensive so you're going to be in almost two grand just for rear tires on the truck and everything's bone stock for 25 with 250,000 miles on it i don't know i just think it's going to be pretty hard for somebody to want to pay twenty five thousand dollars for that thing given the fact that you know, needs alignment, needs tires, needs this, needs that, dings, scratches, probably rust behind the dually fenders in the rear with 250,000 miles, 25, ouch. Just a little bit high, I think. Going on to the Duramax. Duramax guys are a different breed, man. I'm telling you that. I'm not saying that in a in a great way. Um, I mean, we did have a winner for one of our Duramaxes. He's a cool guy. But I'm talking about the, the guys selling these Duramaxes on Facebook, most of them, need help stop it get some help they need a reality check because so, like i have seen some of the most clapped out pieces of crap listed for like forty thousand dollars it'll be like two hundred thousand miles oh seven it's a freaking lbz dude it's the best i'm firm if you don't like it you know screw you let's see what this guy had to say it's an 06 gmc sierra okay so i get it it's it's one of the desirable years right it's got some rust bubbles the frame looks like it's been all coated up so there's probably a little bit of rust on there to deal with um it's got a nice set of seats nice headliner it looks like looks clean but it's got 150,000 miles got some rust on it bubbling out a little bit at least in that one spot he pictured. I don't know anything else on the truck. Let's just assume the rest of it's clean. A lot of work done to it. Fairly stock though. 149,000 miles. Repainted with the OEM color. Repainted OEM color, but it's already got rust bubbling out. That, that would almost lead me to believe there's been something covered up and the paint, he was kind of hoping it would stick a little bit longer before it started bubbling again, but I don't know. And uh, knew this, knew that. There's some bubbles on the rockers and some of the bed, very small. Don't get offended, people, but 30 grand, dude. 30 grand, 150,000 miles on an 06 with some rust bubbling out in some spots. That's why it's hard for me to consider buying a Duramax. Like some of these guys will list these trucks and before people go, oh, well, that's because they're worth it. Like there are some guys out there and some young guys out there that are dumb enough to pay 30 grand for an 06 with 150,000 miles on it with a little rust starting. And again, no hate on this guy's truck. The truck is freaking sick. Like if he was asking 20, it'd be like, 
I'd actually go and consider buying the thing. You know what I mean? Even with the little rust bubbles and just have those fixed the right way. I mean, it's a solid truck for that, but for 30 grand, dude, it's like, oh my goodness. It's hard to fathom people are asking that kind of money. And I saw one almost just like this for sale, and it was actually back home where I used to live, and the guy wanted 28.5 or something ridiculous. And it was like, a, you know, 160 or 170,000 miles on it, super clean. You'll never find another one like it. I said, would you take 20,000 for the truck? And he's like, yeah, right. Trucks this clean don't come around off, and I'm firm. Okay. Three weeks later, the guy messes me back. Hey, man, were you still serious about that? I'm like, no, nah, dude, I bought a different truck. But it's like, you know, guy, you know, but here's the thing. You got another young guy who got his dad's truck off him for a good price five years ago, and then he sees this, and he's trying to list it and trying to get that for it like it's going to happen. And then he's heartbroken when he reality sets in, and they realize the truck's not worth 25 grand. Value is all determined on who's got the checkbook and who's willing to pay it, but... Dude, some of these trucks, man, they will just sit and sit and sit because you're just asking too much money. I get it. There's inflation. The truck market's up, but it's not on crack completely. Like, there's not there's people with so much money going around that they're like, oh, I'm willing to pay any price for a truck. There's still enough used trucks out there to where there's still people with some sensible thinking, and they're not going to pay that kind of money for one of those trucks. Unless they're just desperate because they just want that specific truck and it's just so cool they gotta have it. Another one of those Duramax guys, it's an 01, it's an 01, 2500, 191,000 miles on it. The guy's asking $19,000 for this truck. It's an 01, it's an LB7 Duramax, right? And uh, the tailgate's trashed on the thing. You know, I'm pretty sure I remember the seat was like ripped to pieces on it. And the interior's a little rough. Uh, and he said the entire truck needs new paint. Other than that, it's not too rusty. Again, tailgate um, looks like it's primed to be painted. There's a lot of paint chips, almost like it was painted just really, really poorly at some point. But you can tell the truck, like, the, truck's, the truck was used. I mean, it was used. Seats just ripped to pieces from sliding in and out of the thing. Headliner starting to fray up in the corners. Um, again, this stuff is not a problem. But when you're asking $19,000, 191,000 miles, it's got some stuff done. Like it's got some built parts and stuff. But like, I think people associate with how much money I have wrapped up in a truck with this, this is what I need to get out of it because I've got so much money wrapped up in it that, I, that I'm gonna be getting compensated for this additional stuff. And it's like, okay, certain things, yes. Like for example, if you break your transmission and you pay to fix your transmission, yeah, there might be somebody out there that's like, okay, I'll pay you an extra thousand dollars for peace of mind knowing that it was done if you have paperwork. But in reality, if you're listing the truck, it should be getting listed and sold for a good driving and running truck, not, you know, I'm going to charge you a bunch of extra because I had to fix some stuff. It's like, no, that's part of vehicle ownership. I mean, you, you just have to fix stuff. I mean, that's just how it is. I might have 40 grand in a truck that I've had for five years between fixes, repairs, upgrading the transmission, all this stuff. But the reality is, it's still just a running and driving truck that's in good shape. So you're probably gonna be able to list it for in good shape plus a little bit, but not like, oh, the truck's worth 12 realistically. But since I've got all this money wrapped up in it, I want 20. Like, you can sit on it. Here's another Here's another Duramax. I'm just messing with you Duramax guys. Don't don't get too butthurt in the comments. Dude, I'm just, I'm just messing around, just having some fun here. 2007, so I get it, it's an LBZ. It's an LBZ, you're not gonna have another one like this. This is as good as they get. It's probably the nicest one on this side of uh, the United States. It's probably like the only one you're ever gonna find like this, I'm guessing, is one of those, one of those types of deals. Truck's got a bunch of stuff replaced on it, apparently 270,000 miles for 26.5. But he did add a Starlet headliner, which, you know, I mean, I'll be honest, they are worth something. They're nice. But I don't know if it makes the truck freaking worth 26.5 with 270,000 miles. But I could be wrong. This truck might go flying. Somebody might come on in and just be like, dude, you're right. There's not another one like this anywhere in the world. I will pay your absurd asking price of $27,000 for that truck. I got a buddy who had a 6.0. I tried to tell him not to get it. He was convinced to get one because, you know, his his dad had a couple when they were brand new trucks. And at the time, his dad was one of the guys, you know, he buys a new truck every other year. So bought a brand new truck, 6.0, sold it. Bought another brand new 6.0, after two years, sold it. And then he bought another new truck, 6.4, after two years, sold it. So like, it's one of those things where like, 
people think like, oh, well, those are great trucks because we had one. It was a great truck. Yeah. Most vehicles, even vehicles that suck are great in the first 50,000 miles when they haven't had to be tested, tried and true yet. So they got a 6.0. Theirs had like 250,000 miles on it. It was his first truck, in my opinion paid way too much money for the truck in the first place, but it didn't have any rust, it was clean. I think it was after one year of ownership, they said that they had about $20,000 wrapped up just in repairs. The truck went through a transmission, it went through gaskets and head studs, it went through all kinds of stuff. I mean, it, it just, all kinds of stuff happened. After he sold the truck, within like three or four months, the guy that had bought it, said that it burned down on the side of the road. I said, I told you not to buy 6.0. He's like, oh, I'm not buying another 6.0. I don't know what it is about those 6.0 guys, man, but I was talking to him again, and this has been a few years since that happened, and I said, uh, you never, you still would never buy a 6.0, right? You'd never buy another one after all that. He's like, I don't know, man. They are the best sounding diesel I have ever heard, but they're, they just sound so good. He's like, I think that at some point here, I'm gonna have to buy another one. Even if they are the biggest pain in the butt, they're loyal to them. You know, it's got brand new tires, brand new wheels, zero rust, 110,000 miles. Um, the trucks look super cool. I'm not hating on how the trucks are designed. I'm not hating on this truck for how it looks. It looks awesome, but 30 grand? I mean, you might be able to find somebody that's crazy enough like that. I mean, those some of those guys that love, love those trucks, they are just absurd. They're just crazy. They don't care if they know the truck's gonna have problems. They just think they're so cool that they would just buy it anyway and deal with the problems. If that's the case, cool. But in my honest opinion, that truck is not worth $30,000. And I get it, it's bulletproof. It's got head studs and gaskets and this delete and that delete and it, it'll never give you a problem. So was my buddies and it gave them all kinds of problems. All kinds of problems. And it was an 05 or an 06. Like it was a later model of a 6L. Problem after problem after problem after problem. It was like transmission, then it was head gasket, then it was just one thing after another. Injectors, I mean, the truck just needed everything all, all the time. And um, just one of those deals. So, I mean, again, this truck looks awesome. I I love the truck. It looks super cool. If it was a 7.3 with 110,000 miles set up like that, all day long, in my opinion, yeah, it's worth the $29,000. Now, then you got this 6.0, and this, in my honest opinion, this is reasonable, okay? The guy's not asking anything absurd. Obviously, it's totally different than the previous one we just looked at. It's a regular cab, not a crew cab. It's cloth interior, not leather interior. Stock wheels and tires, not super cool, expensive wheels and tires. But it's still under 100,000 miles, just hardly, for 15,000 bucks. I don't even like 6.0s, but I would consider 6.0 like that just because the guy seems like he's pretty reasonable. Based on what it looks like, it looks like it's probably just used as the guy's weekend work truck parked in a really nice shop probably well cleaned and washed and maintained like it just kind of like you sometimes you can just look in the pictures and you can just kind of know like this person you can just kind of tell they care about their stuff they take care of it and he's asking 15 for a truck with 100,000 miles on it it's a four-wheel drive i mean there's just two extremes like the other truck was double the price same year truck a little bit more miles but not enough to make much of a difference and yeah it's a nicer trim it's got some stuff done to it but it's like Man, 30 grand. I just don't, I don't know, man. I just don't think it's worth it. But then again, the whole point of this reaction video is not only for me to react to it, but it's for you guys to react down in the comments because I, I fully understand. There are going to be so many comments probably that are like, you don't know what you're talking about. Six are the best. Or Duramaxers are the best. Why do you think Duramaxers are so expensive? It's because they're better than all your Dodges. Like, I get it, man. I get it. You're passionate about it. You love them. And uh, that's cool. That's cool. I love Dodges. That's why, you know, even though I pay 20, 25,000 bucks for a second gen or a third gen that you know, in my opinion, it's worth it because I know the trucks, I know they're reliable and I know they run good, very low problems, but you might not see it that way. So you're willing to pay a whole bunch more for a Duramax or a whole much more for a Ford because they might have problems, but maybe you just, you know how to fix those problems. You know, it's like pick your evil, which, which one do you want? All that being said, it was fun messing around with some people and, uh, get some get some emotions going hopefully guys enjoyed the video. Do not forget that if you want to enter to win this super, it's got Starlet headliner. It's cool. Yeah, that's right. It's got a Starlet headliner. It's, it's it's cool. Beautiful 2004 5.9 Cummins. It comes with $5,000 in cash. Head on over to lnpgear.com because right now every $1 is going to get you 30 entries towards winning this truck, which is your max entry multiplier for this entire giveaway. So if you want to grab those, that is ending on Sunday. So do not waste any time. Grab those entries. Get entered because somebody's got to take this thing home. Just like the previous trucks that we've done, that person could be you. So thanks so much, guys, for all the love and all the support and uh, shooting the breeze with me. And I will catch you in the next video. 
for everybody that likes all the old content or maybe you've never seen our old content, we started a new channel. I will leave the link in the description below. It's called LNP Reruns, and where we are basically Monday through Friday, we are going to be re uploading all of our old YouTube content, some of our most iconic original videos from way back. Trust me, when you see the first few, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, is that the same guy? Because I was like 16, 17 when I started filming, and now I'm 23 years old um, with a little bit of a cold going on right now so you know it's gonna be very drastic it's very extremely different go check out the videos and uh, I also noticed you should make some comments about how like my dad had so much less white hair in his beard in, those, in that first video I was like oh my gosh dude like his beard is like completely white now and like in that video it was like all red and brown and stuff it's crazy that we've been filming videos for almost almost seven years on this channel that's pretty freaking wild go check that out every Monday through Friday 7 p.m. Eastern time we're gonna be uploading a new old episode and we're just gonna be going from the beginning of time the original LNP YouTube content we're gonna be going through and just doing a rerun of all of our favorite episodes over the years and uh, we're gonna do them in order from when they were originally released we're gonna upload our top episodes but we're gonna do it in the order they were filmed and recorded so thanks so much guys check it out if you want if not no big deal but I'll catch you in the next video peace